pawn shop owners, what was the best reaction you have seen out of someone that tried to sell you something that was completely worthless? I would like to share the opposite, girls thought they had worthless cards ended up being very worthwhile point I worked in a comic book shop that also sold trading cards. In this case, Magic, The Gathering. Two young girls came in, maybe 14 over 15 years old with a small box of cards. They said they found it on their uncle's closet that passed away, figured it was worthless, and just wanted to see the worth point I thought the same, and opened up the box of cards to take a quick glance, and was a little alarmed at what I saw, alpha and beta cards, a couple of power 9 cards, and this was just the first 10 cards in. I stopped, said, I'm really sorry, I'm not familiar with these older cards, I lied, I just wasn't authorized to try to buy something of this magnitude, I'll need to call the store owner, I called him, and at first he was annoyed, because the other store he was visiting, had a Ford blow through the front window. He just said, to not bother with a trade-in, until I causally mentioned some of the cards there in the stack. He said, don't let those cards leave the building. I'm on my way, and hung up point the girls couldn't wait, and I asked, if they wouldn't mind leaving the cards with me, along with their names and phone numbers, and we could get back to them. When the owner came in, he went to the back, got some gloves, and went through all the cards I stayed after my shift, because I just wanted to see it unfold. The owner gained like 10,000 respect points from me when the girls and an older woman, presumably somebody's mother, came back in, as he was straight with them. He said, what you have here is all very worthwhile. There isn't a card in this box that would sell for less than about $5. But these cards here, he found out some cards that I couldn't see are the most valuable in the box. And this one, we pulled a card away, would sell for the price of these and the entire box at least twice as much. I do not have enough money available to make you a fair offer. What you have here is easily worth about $20,000 to a collector. The Girls mouths dropped open. The owner offered them everything he had available in the shop, about $6,000. They accepted. Oh man, my great uncle owns a pawn shop and some of the sheet there is hilarious or heartbreaking point people trying to sell free old TVs they got on Craigslist for hundreds of dollars, because now they are vintage, obviously. Rented instruments for their kids band class that have tags on them from the rental place point and oh geez, do people get pissed about engagement rings. He literally has a bag of engagement rings, they so easy to come by. Women tend to be sad when they find out they get almost nothing or are fake. Men tend to get aggressive, enough that he has my cousin up front watch out extra careful when he tells a dude he can't pay really much of anything for what the dude thought was an investment ring. The excuses people make when obviously stolen stuff are just horrible, especially if he asks them if they can prove they are the owner of the item point on the other hand, if someone isn't trying to sell their wedding ring, especially if it's a lady with kids, he's been known to just give them $50 and send them on their way. My cousin who works with him has a stack of brochures for drug and alcohol treatment resources and stuff like that that she regularly gives out. Former private security, my partner used to work security for pawn shop point and a vajo man once arrived at his place with a trailer full of landscaping equipment. It looked exactly like what you see residential landscaping companies use, full of shovels, mowers, blowers, enough equipment for 3 to 5 person crew. He wanted to sell everything at once, trailer included point the owner said let's inventory everything, give me 24 hours to add this up, and I'll call you. The owner takes a notebook and writes down everything, every item and what s slash n he could get, writes down the plates on the trailer, and took a quick picture of a misc sticker on the hitch point he calls police. The trailer was reported stolen that day. Him and a detective picked a time that was convenient. Owner calls the guy back and says I'll give you 4k for everything. And they argue over the phone, and he gives up and says he will pay 7k for all equipment. Just come in Tuesday at X the guy shows up, one detective two officers arrested him. The arrest was calm, and without incident of any kind, the guy damn knew the jig was up point the actual value of equipment, like under 1k tops. It was heavily used very old lawn equipment. I'm sure it worked great for whoever it was, but it was all super old equipment with little value. I've been working in a pawn shop for 6 years now. 
So many stories. My favorite was a guy who had been in several times with complete crap. We never bought any of it. This time he gets pissed and demands that we buy something and refuses to leave until we do. He is being very loud and cursing. He was clearly on something. I suspect meth. We told him we were going to call the cops and he responded with good. When they get here I'm gonna have them arrest you. We called the cops right in front of him and he actually stuck around for them to show up. The cops arrived and asked him to step outside and tell his side of the story. He continues to make it very clear that he is faked up on something and they take his backpack. He is talking to one officer while the other starts going through his bag. He turns to see the officer going through his bag and violently snatches it away from him. The look of did you seriously just do that on the cop's face was priceless. They tackled him from both sides, wrestled him to the ground, cuffed him, and put him in the back of the car. One of the officers walked in and simply states, we are going to take him with us. Is everything else okay? Okay. Well I guess it's time for my most embarrassing moment. I got scammed by one of those stereo vans that goes around with equipment saying they had extra, but really it's fake. Went to the bar, got my hat stolen, I really liked the hat, so I went to the store to buy another one. As I was walking in this van pulls up, and these two dudes are like hey, wanna buy a stereo? I'm like nah I'm cool. They were really persistent. It also just so happened I had an extra hundred in my pocket. They kept pushing originally trying to sell it for like 400 bucks. They said it was their last stereo, and I told them I only had 100. Honestly, I bought it, because I not only wanted them out of my face, but I also thought it was a cool deal. Fast forward to me getting home, and never opening the product. I swear to god it sat in my living room for like 6 months. Finally, one day I need a little extra cash and I'm like, why don't I just sell the speakers, I drive around to 4 different pawn shops who all tell me they couldn't take it. No explanation why. Finally, I have this Hispanic lady who barely speaks English at a pawn shop offering me 40 bucks. I kept haggling on the price so finally she got her manager. When the manager came over he googled the product and turns out, it's a known fake product that's sold all around. The guy thought I was trying to get over on him. I explained myself and left before the cops got called. I was a little worried. It didn't hit me until later that night why I was getting such weird facial expressions from the other pawn shops I went to. Ugh. I still cringe at that story. I worked in a buy slash sell slash trade video game store. Day after day, people would come in with commonatory stuff. PS2 rock band guitars and drums it's throw away originals box or playstation 1 games, superman 64 yada yada yada. They would be so happy and excited, and I had to be the one, to break it to them, that they weren't going to get hundreds of dollars for their crap, but, I spent 60 dollars on it, when it was new. We have taken really good care of it. We have never even used it. It's for the N64, isn't it vintage? What do you mean a third party's box controller isn't worth the trade in price for a Microsoft brand one? They're the same thing, day in, day out point I had a woman who threw a complete fit that we wouldn't take her way I rock band drums at or two guitars. She also had 25 DVDs, an originals box and a Wii I, neither of which could read discs, and about 30 bottom shelf games. All of the discs were scratched to oblivion, and everything reeked of cigarette smoke and was yellow. When I told her that the only things we could take were the two controllers that came with those box, she yelled, threw the box of DVDs on the floor, and proceeded to rearrange games on our shelves as she stormed out. The man she was with just picked everything up and they left. They tried going to our second location, but we called them and let them know what had happened. They got the same deal there, and she threw the same fit point that's the problem with running a local video game store, most people think they have a secret gold mine when they just have run of the mill crap. I went with my friend to sell some old Pokemon cards that he insisted were worth sheets tons of money. I just kept my mouth shut and was like oh boy gee golly you're gonna be rich buddy. So we get there, and the pawn shop offers him like $5. He flips his faking sheet, goes on this huge rant about they were his dead dad's cards and his dad spent hundreds of dollars on them etc. The pawn shop owner was like dude, your dad got ripped off. 
another huge tirade about how he didn't know his dad, his dad wasn't stupid etc. Then the owner was like well where's your dad, and then my friend was like he shot himself, and the owner was like, like I said, stupid father. Which I think he probably shouldn't have said that, but it wasn't far from the truth. His dad shot himself when he found out my buddy was born and left a note about not wanting to take care of the kid, wasn't his responsibility etc. Anyways, it was a sight to see I'm sorry my dude, but this reeks of bullshit. You and your friend are old enough to be allowed to go to a pawn shop by yourselves, which surely makes you at least teenagers. But your friend's dad was of baby making age and spending hundreds of dollars on Pokemon cards when they were brand new and therefore cheap. Pokemon is only 20 years old, and a quick Google confirms the English language version of the TCG is only 18 years old, and very few adults were into it when it first came out. Point add that to the fact that your friend defends to the hilt a man he never met, who shot himself, rather than be a father yet still left his prized card collection to his unborn son, yeah. I call shenanigans. I went with my friend to sell some old Pokemon cards that he insisted were worth sheets tons of money. I just kept my mouth shut and was like oh boy gee golly you're gonna be rich buddy. So we get there and the pawn shop offers him like five dollars. He flips his faking sheet, goes on this huge rant about they were his dead dad's cards and his dad spent hundreds of dollars on them etc. The pawn shop owner was like dude, your dad got ripped off. Another huge tirade about how he didn't know his dad, his dad wasn't stupid etc. Then the owner was like well where's your dad, and then my friend was like he shot himself, and the owner was like, like I said, stupid father. Which I think he probably shouldn't have said that, but it wasn't far from the truth. His dad shot himself when he found out my buddy was born and left a note about not wanting to take care of the kid, wasn't his responsibility etc. Anyways, it was a sight to see I'm sorry my dude, but this reeks of bullshit. You and your friend are old enough to be allowed to go to a pawn shop by yourselves, which surely makes you at least teenagers. But your friend's dad was of baby making age and spending hundreds of dollars on Pokemon cards when they were brand new and therefore cheap. Pokemon is only 20 years old, and a quick Google confirms the English language version of the TCG is only 18 years old, and very few adults were into it when it first. When I was in college I got to work in a pawn shop in Houston. He wanted to sell a gold Dralux. He handed it to me, and as soon as it dropped into my hand I just looked at him and said it was fake. He got all upset because I didn't even look at it, but I looked on his arm, and he was wearing an Omega. I asked if he got the Omega from the same place he got the Ralux. He said no, he knew the Omega was a fake because he bought it for 20 bucks. I asked to see it, and as soon as he handed to me, I had a very strong suspicion it was real. Looked at it real close, and then asked if I could open it up. When I opened it, there was the model and serial and a special mark of a material that Omega would put on the inside of some of their more exclusive watches. When I said this is real, that one's not he got all pussy with me. He said he was too smart to fall for that trick. He wanted 500 for the Ralux, and he would give me the Omega. I just shook my head in amusement, and he thought I was saying no. Then he said 400. Just then one of his friends came walking, in yelling at him in Spanish. Then he said 200 and that's my final offer. So I gave him 200, let him fill out the paperwork, and sent him on his way. As he was walking out the door I said hey, you forgot something, and I tossed the Rolex at him. The look on his face was just complete confusion. I'm pretty sure he knew he just screwed himself. Turns out the watch was purchased by Willie Nelson and was given to Ray Orbison as a birthday gift. Ray Orbison pulled it off and gave it to a waiter at a club in Houston he was performing at. The waiter gave it to a friend for a line of coke and then it came to me. Still got it sitting in the safe. Edit 1. When I first got the watch I only had an estimate of its value. According to the book at the time, it was valued at about $2,000. That was just going by the looks of a common speedmaster. It wasn't until I went and had an Omega collector have a look at it till I started thinking it was worth much more. That's when I started digging. As for how I ended up getting the watch, the pawn shop was owned by my dorm mate's mom. She was a frisky 50 apostrophe ish just divorced lady with a big heart. She let me wear it out on a date one night and said to keep it. 
came out point add that to the fact that your friend defends to the hilt a man he never met who shot himself rather than be a father yet still left his prized card collection to his unborn son yeah i call shenanigans i worked at a pawn shop one time a guy came in with a dvd slash vcr combo brand new in the box we, the pawn shop employees, would always engage the customer in conversation while looking at the item, partly to fill out the customer and see if they had inconsistencies in their story that may indicate stolen goods. So I started the conversation, wow, this is a nice unit, where do you get this, best, buy. Just bought it a couple days ago, oh, nice. But you want to sell it to us? Why not just return it to best buy, oh. Yeah, um I can't find the receipt. But I bought it right down the street at the best buy like two blocks from here. While we talk, I'm pulling the unit out of the box and checking the cables and remote, looking on the bottom for a serial number. As I flip the bottom of the unit toward me, I see that it has a giant sticker on it that says property of rent a center. Do not buy or sell. I didn't say a word to him. My boss was watching over my shoulder. As soon as the boss saw the sticker, he pulled out a Polaroid camera, snapped the guy's picture, cussed him out, and practically threw the DVD slash VCR at the guy point I sent a fax to the other pawn shops in town to give them a heads up. Wow this one I can answer. I have to that come to mind. First was a rolled crazy lady that wanted $4 for some pizza. She had to offer a coffee mug from a local insurance company. I explained I was sorry, but if she was hungry it'd give her a dollar to keep the mug and go get herself two hot dogs from Sheets. She threatened to vomit in my face then proceeded to throw the mug into the wall above my head and stormed out. Second was just a few weeks ago a 40 ish year old man pulls into my parking lot while I was out smoking and says he's got something great. He then pulls out a Dollar General brand toy train from the front seat with a look of glee. I humor him and pull it up on eBay and show him that unfortunately it's only worth $3. He snatched it back and screamed I know trains are worth a lot of money and I don't know sheet. I as politely as possible tell him to fuck off I wasn't even open and I took time after hours to help as best I could. I come inside and sit to do my paperwork when I hear a loud engine running in the parking lot. I stand up and this motherfucker got a chainsaw from his trunk and is coming up the steps. I grab a snub nose six shooter pistol air gun off the shelf. When he swung open the door I pulled the gun on him and said one more step you're dead. He huffed and turned and went back to his car and left and I went and cleaned my shorts. If he called my bluff I would have been chainsawed to pieces for a train. I hate my job. Everyone needs five dollars I've heard every story ever imaginable. Not an owner, but used to work in one owned by my dad's cousin. Some lady walked in, and we examined her jewelry which we determined was fake gold. So she walked away mad, and I guess she threw it in the trash can by the exit. Later that same day we see a man walk in that seems to just be looking around, and after a few minutes he goes to the counter and shares a story about how his grandmother passed away and left him some jewelry which was passed down through many generations, but that time were tough. So he wanted to pawn the jewelry temporarily until he able to get some more money. So we tell him sure, we can take a look at it. Well he pulls out the exact same jewelry the lady had earlier that day. But not to anger him, we test it with a magnet, just to show him it isn't real gold. He then gets very angry saying that it is real gold, and that it is 50k rare gold from the 1700s and that's why it is magnetic. For anyone who knows about gold, 1. Real gold isn't magnetic too. The purest form of gold is 24k. We explain that to him, and he get mad and pulls out a knife and starts trying to break our bulletproof glass with a cheap looking knife, and breaks his knife. After that he just walks out, and we never saw him again. While closing up we checked the trash can, and the jewelry the lady threw out was nowhere to be found. TLDR, guy picked in our trash cans, and got mad, when we told him the gold was fake. I was looking over a chainsaw that this meth head couple brought in. It was missing a chain and had no gas. I told them that I couldn't buy it in its current state as I couldn't test it. Plus it looked beat to sheet. They were pissed and I could tell we are going through withdrawals. 
They left in a hurry, only to reappear with it filled with gas and a chain attached. The chain looked brand new. My first though was they probably lifted the chain from the hardware store down the street. I ended up offering them $15 as it was fairly abused. The woman who was with him went up a sheet. She started yelling at me and calling me all kinds of names. She was pregnant and despite being obviously too skinny, looked like she was almost due. I told them that I was going to call the cops if they didn't leave the store. She started firing up the chainsaw. I kept telling her that she needed to leave and at this point I grabbed the phone and started fake dialing 911. By the 10th claw, so she got it to start and proceeded to wave it in my face and yelling that she was going to kill me. Her boyfriend slash husband or whatever grabbed her by the arm to try to get her to drop the chainsaw. This caused her to jerk the chainsaw back and clipped him right in the upper bicep. It tore right through his jacket and cut right through his skin. After she realized she did this, they both ran out of the store leaving a trail of blood. At that point I did call 9, double 1, and they caught them waiting at the bus stop down the street. I quit the pawn shop bus shortly after that as that wasn't the only time my life was threatened. This is a comment I posted on a similar ask credit about a year ago but it still applies. Now is my time to shine point I am a store manager at one of the busiest pawn shops in Northern California. And because of that I have the high volume of customers that most don't. So that means lots of stories one a guy brought in a stone painted green claiming it was ancient gold and that after eons it had developed a patina. I tried to explain to him that old gold is ancient gold made in something as intense as dead star colliding, but he insisted it was gold. After about 30 minutes of discussion he forced me to test it, and when I showed him it wasn't gold he told me he spent 4k buying it awesome guy to a guy brought in a bag of used syringes and wanted to trade it for a TV. I did not oblige 3 a guy brought in a piece of safety glass from a windshield and claimed it was a diamond, even when I assured him it wasn't for someone brought in a clump of bent and slightly melted forks and spoons claiming it was a meteorite fallen from the ice trash dump shot into space. 5 someone brought in a costume cape claiming it was the real invisibility cloak from Harry Potter. With further questioning he didn't think it was a prop from the movie, but the actual magical cape 6. As a watch guy this is my favorite. Someone brought in a Rolex watch claiming their father gave it to them. When I showed her that it actually said Ralph Lex and Skiss made she claimed that those were misprints and meant it was worth more because of it. After I opened the watch to show her the movement I saw that there was no movement at all but just a weight in the back. 7 a couple came in with an old 1990 30 inch TV claiming that it was antique and refused to leave the store until we gained them $800 for it. We showed them selling online for literally a couple of dollars but they refused and said they know what they had ate, not in line with crazy item but a good story, a couple used to come in once a week and pawn stuff. Well apparently one day the wife decided she was done with him as a husband, snuck up behind him in the store, sprayed him in the face with pepper spray, stole his car keys and his wallet, ran out of the store, and stole his car. Pawn shop customer here. Felt like I would tell the other side of the coin point I saw this neat watch in a movie and bought it for $80 which was its selling price at the time. It wasn't a fancy brand at all mind you, it's a brand that sells watches for as low as $5 points some years go by, and I don't wear the watch anymore, and I'm at a pawn shop shopping around for video game deals. I'm wearing the watch randomly. I figure I never wear or use this watch. I had to dust it off to put it on today. I've sold to the pawn shop that I was at before and they are honest. So I slap it up on the counter and the guy tells me he's not interested in it. I told him dude I'll take $20 bucks for it. I never wear it. He still says no. I head to two other pawn shops, different city, that day looking for deals, and the other two pawn shop owners tell me no they won't take it. The watch is in pristine working condition, but since the brand isn't thought of as luxury or valuable they refuse to buy it. Thinking it's a $20 Walmart watch. I buy some games and head home. I figure I'll throw it back in my drawer I get home and think to look on eBay. It's selling online for $350 to $500, actual selling for those prices not people asking for those prices. I put it on eBay and sold it within 6 hours for nearly $500.
in the years since I bought it to the time I put it up on eBay the watch gained a cult following and the manufacturer stopped making it, so it became worth a lot. Managed a paintball story for years and got all kind of deals or people mad. Can't recall any of the mad people cause I'd careless what they thought their junk was worth. I'd always be very honest with them and tell them our store didn't buy used equipment because all our stuff comes with a warranty. If they wanted me to buy it, we could walk out of the store and work a deal out. I'd inform them I'm going to lowball them because I'm only buying it to make some profit point some of my best deals were off friends who got out of the sport point bought three compete setups from my lawyer friend for $450. Sold two setups to a friend for a quick sale to get my money back, and sold the third for around $400. Point bought a friend's gear back for $400, sold his gun setup for $400, made about $500 off little stuff, and kept several things I wanted. Bought a gun I figured was stolen cause the price was too good, $150, sold it online for $450. Months later kid I knew came in talking about it, so I showed him a pic of a gun I bought, and it was his. Was long gone from my hands, told him who I bought from. Turns out he knew the kid with sticky fingers, and was stolen at a house party point paintball field pace sucked, but you can make a lot off the buy slash sell slash trade market, if you know what you're doing. Porn stars makes me cringe. They interview the poor saps in the parking lot and ask them what they'd want for their item. Half the time they lead off with that number as their initial offer one episode has a guy with a Civil War era gold bar. In the parking lot he says he did his homework and wants dollar sign 60k for it. Knows some of the history behind it and everything point he goes in and they say it needs to be authenticated, etc. A guy agrees and comes back later. Turns out it's the real deal and worth a fortune point he's asked what he wants for it. He says dollar sign 100k. The owner of the pawn shop laughs at him and says okay, okay, what do you really want? He says dollar sign 60k. He's down to his minimum price without the pawn stars guy even having offered anything. The first offer is for less money than he could have gotten if he melted down the gold bar and sold it for scrap. They go back and forth. And the porn stars guy argues he's gonna have to put it up in his shop for a long time, maybe over a year, which limits his return. Then there's overhead, he has to shine a spotlight on it, etc. I think they settled on dollar sign 20k for this gold bar that was worth dollar sign 60k. They interview the porn stars guy afterwards, and he's super excited, cause he lined up a buyer when this guy called and said he was coming over, and he's getting dollar sign 60k. Kind of a late reply, but I used to work at a used game slash DVD slash comic store right next door to a pawn shop, so we had almost exactly the same patrons. We bought a 360 that was stolen point when anybody sold to us. We took down their license number and phone number. And a signature. We had to give that info to the cops. Essentially I talked to an officer on the phone a couple of times and faxed him all that. We didn't get into trouble, and that was the last I heard from them about it. Point luckily we hadn't sold the 360 yet, so the couple who had it stolen from them got it back, but we had to sell it back to them. Apparently they were pretty sure they were gonna be reimbursed in court, and they were pretty chill about the whole thing. Again that was the last I heard about it. Point other times, that we bought stolen items didn't end so well for the victim. We went through stock pretty quickly, especially if it was a new game. We never got in trouble or lost money point what kept surprising me was the amount of thieving morons who would give us their ID numbers and phone numbers when selling stolen items. We would never buy without that and we always gave it to the cops. I had a guy, tweaker, bring in a rock and claimed it was gold ore. I tried to explain to him that the smooth garden stone is clearly not gold ore. He would not accept that and demanded to speak to someone that was older who would know more about gold ore. I told him I was the oldest person there and I knew the most about gold. He got a little heated and told us that if we didn't buy his gold he was going to sue us. Naturally I smiled and said good luck. Then he got really upset and demanded we buy his rock or he is going to come back and make us buy it. My associate and I stepped around the counter so that he could see we were clearly carrying and suggested that wouldn't be a good idea. 
we called the police. When the guy ran off luckily he forgot his at point fast forward one month. A man went to one of our other locations and announced he had just purchased our chain and demanded that all employees stopped carrying firearms at work. He explained that he had found a bunch of gold or in someone's yard, sold it, then purchased our company. After nobody took him seriously he smashed some of the cases and the police showed up and arrested him. Funny guy. Haven't seen him since.